So now we're going to have a look at bar charts. So it's always a good idea to have a picture of your data because it makes it really easy to see the results of your study. There are two different types of bar charts that we're going to have a look at and they are clustered bar charts and segmented bar charts. I'm going to use the same example we had in the previous slide where we surveyed 203 students and recorded their smoking status and gender. Now when we're graphing this, it's important to note that this is the frequency table and the values that we have in here are the count values. So we'll have a look at the clustered bar chart first and here we have our graph for our count data from the frequency table. Now if we have a look at the y-axis, we can see it goes from 0 to 80 and these are for our count values and we have it marked count just to show what we're recording. Along the bottom, we can see that our first categorical variable, which was smoking status, has been split up into its two options, which were smoker and non-smoker, and each of these has two bars, one for males and one for females. So if we look at smokers first, we can see that the number of males who smoke is 72, and the number of females who smoke is 34. Then for non-smokers, we can see that the number of male non-smokers is 44 and the number of female non-smokers is 53, which is exactly the same information that our frequency table gives us. The graph is just the easiest way of showing what's going on with our data. Next, we're going to have a look at what a segmented bar chart would look like for this data. Again, we're going to use the frequency table that has recorded our count data. So here's what our segmented bar chart looks like. Now straight away we can see that instead of having two bars for smoker and non-smoker, we have one bar for each which is split in two for males and females. On our y-axis we have our count values marked as count just to remind us that's what's being recorded here. So if we take smoker first we can see that the full bar goes up as far as 106 on our y-axis, which is the total number of people that we recorded as smokers. Then this bar is split in two for male and female, so the bottom half of this bar represents the 72 male smokers and the top half represents the 34 female smokers. Again, with our non-smoker bar, we can see that this goes up as far as 97, which is the total number of non-smokers recorded, and then it's split up into males and females, where the orange represents the 44 males and the green is the 53 females. It might be the case that we have our relative frequency contingency table and that we want to graph the values from that. So again, it's important to remember that the values in the relative frequency contingency table are the percentage values corresponding to the count values that we recorded, and these four values will add up to 100. So we'll show the clustered bar chart for our relative frequency table first, and it will look like this. Now the first thing we should notice is that the y-axis has changed. It's marked as percentage now instead of count and it goes from 0 to 40 instead of 0 to 80. This is because we're graphing the percentage values this time instead of the counts. So again it's the same format where smoker and non-smoker have two bars each, one for males and one for females, and the values that we have are 35.47% for male smokers, 16.75% for female smokers, 21.67% for male non-smokers, and 26.11% for female non-smokers. Now if we remember back to the last slide on contingency tables, we talked about the joint distribution being the percentages corresponding to each combination of our two categorical variables. So it's the percentages corresponding to male smoker, male non-smoker, female smoker and female non-smoker. We also show that the joint distribution was the four center values of our relative frequency contingency table, which is exactly what we have graphed here. So our clustered bar chart here shows the joint distribution of smoking status and gender. Next we'll take a look at the segmented bar chart for our relative frequency contingency table, which turns out like this. Again, the y-axis is marked as percentage and goes from 0 to 50 and just reminds us that we're graphing the percentage values and not the count values. So it's the same format as the first segmented bar chart we looked at. The bar for smoker goes up to 52.22%, which was the total percentage of smokers in our table. 
This is split in two where the bottom half represents 35.47% for males and 16.75% for females. The bar for a non-smoker goes up to 47.78% and is split in two where the orange represents 21.67% for males and the green represents 26.11% for females. Now again, if we look at the four percentage values that we have represented in this graph, we can see that they're just the four center values of our relative frequency contingency table. And so this graph also shows the joint distribution of smoking status and gender. So we've seen that by graphing our relative frequency contingency table, we have shown the joint distribution of smoking status and gender. But it's also possible to use clustered and segmented bar charts to show the conditional distribution. If we remember back to the slide on contingency tables, we said that the conditional distribution is the distribution of one event given that another has occurred. So I'm going to go back to the case where we found the distribution of smoking status conditioning on gender and we have our table here of the values we're going to graph. So the clustered bar chart for the distribution of smoking status for each level of gender looks like this. So again it's important to note that we have percentage along the y-axis just to show it's the percentage values we're graphing and not the counts. So this time along the bottom we have two bars for males and two bars for females where each of them has a bar for smoker and non-smoker. We have male and female along the bottom because we have restricted on gender. We should note also that the two bars within each cluster sum to 100%. So we have two groupings of bars we could say and each grouping gives us the conditional distribution of smoking status for each level of gender. So now we'll have a look at the segmented bar chart for the conditional distribution, which looks like this. So again, just to be aware of it, we have percentage along the side, so we know that's what we're recording. So our bar chart has two bars, one for males and one for females, because we've restricted on gender, which is why each bar goes up to 100%. The two bars are split in two, green for non-smoker and orange for smoker. The, for the male bar, the orange represents 62.07% and the green represents 37.93%. For the female bar, the orange represents 39.08% and the green represents 60.92%. What we have graphed here is the distribution of smoking status for each level of gender. The development of these resources was supported by the NDLR and the Department of Mathematics and Statistics at NUI Maynooth, and they will be available from the following websites.